Uh, today's video I have this little His Master's Voice or HMV Sprite Radio I think it was a JL or JA or something chassis supposedly in this thing It's belonged to a friend, I actually got that Ariston turntable finally back to him And that all seems to be running well And he's cleaned up his garage a bit and had dug this out And the problem with this is it's got a random battery connector here I think it was a EverReady 2510 battery these are made for, which is actually two 7.5 volt batteries, which is why it's got four connections. I think the other one's just a locator pin and two of them wired together. And it actually wired them up in series, so you got 15 volts. So, you know, you wanted to get it going again. I said, why don't we just hook a um, power adapter up to it, get rid of that connector. One of the wires is broken off, but that just went to this little joiner on the speaker here. And then they can actually use the thing again because it's just sitting around that chassis loose too by the look of it. Might even take all this apart because it needs a good clean. And I did look this up on the the radio museum and there's a few pictures around of them in red. Seems to be the most popular colour. This I, I think there was one called citrus is the colour, so I assume this is the citrus one, an orange colour. And one other colour which I can't remember what it was called. So it came out in three colours, there's a bit of a circuit in there. Supposedly on there somewhere it tells you it's a JL or JA or whatever it was. Can't see it, looks like it's all germanium transistors. AC127, 126 match pair, or AC132 match pair, to AF117, 117, 116. I think they're meant to have a couple of diodes in them. I can see, no, that's not a diode. There's probably a diode detector in here somewhere. Oh, there's one, an OA90, I think. Yeah, minus, well, it says minus 15 volts because it's like a positive chassis. It tells you what the alignment is. Some transistor pinouts. I can't see anything that actually says anything about what chassis. There's no model number on it. It's got a label number, but that's about it. A bit of a chip off the handle, unfortunately. But I might even give this thing a bit of a clean up as well. I guess we should try and see if it actually runs. I think the one I saw online had a red piece. That's like a mother of pearl piece stuck in there. Whether that's original or not, I'm not sure. But it hasn't been used for years as far as I know. Probably haven't been able to buy those batteries for 30 years or something, maybe longer. I doubt they've been around since the sort of 80s. And I can't see anything on the circuit board. I think these came out around 64 or maybe a little bit later, but sort of mid 60s, we might as well say. And I think, see they had a 47 ohm speaker, which has got 40A slash 47 on it. What brand is it? I guess we might need to undo that. Let's see if we can get that metal bracket out of the way. Oh, the speaker's attached to it, is it? Oh, okay. It's an MSP, Manufacturer's Special Products, Proprietary Limited Sydney, High Flux Speaker, so made in Australia by the look of it. I'll get rid of that for the time being. Got the old hex head flat blade screws. And yeah, a few old Ducon capacitors. I think I saw something online about these ones that look like this ceramics with a red dip on them. Are Jukons as well and can cause issues. I think to get the knob off, you've got to undo a grub screw there. But look, there is a Mark II version of these radios as well. I don't know, maybe the knob does push onto that brass bit. Yeah, it looks like it's got the little metal metal clamp piece where it probably slides off. I can't tell what sort of shaft that is. It's got spring mounts on the circuit board. What on earth is going on there? Don't know, maybe to make it less prone to damage or something. It's kind of the early days of making transistor stuff. Number seven license was manufactured by Australian Radio Technical Services and Patents Company in respect to the Commonwealth of Australia and its territory, sound and television broadcast by wireless, but only for private or domestic use and not for operation under public or commercial revenue sharing purpose. 
NB post office license is necessary. So they still had licenses in those days. It must have been the late 60s or something. They got rid of them finally. Oh, so they got little brass, slotted brass pieces with rubber around them, I think, as mounts, and then threaded parts maybe coming out of the plastic, and then springs in between, except that corner one doesn't have a spring. There's our on off switch. Oh, the other thing, the antenna coil was loose, so is that still hooked up? One end had fallen out of its thing. There's a couple of frayed wires on that one. Wow, it's actually just like. It's not cotton coated the wire on there, it's like just stranded wire, twisted and possibly lacquered, I guess. Have to be lacquered. Yeah, funny old thing, that's for sure. So let's see if we put 15 volts into this thing, if we at least get it to run. And I guess we should double check here, yeah, positive went to the switch, because there's nothing to really say for sure. Yeah, positive is then switched to earth. Negative goes up to the speaker. Oh, yeah, well, that's, so that is actually the speaker cone we connected to. Ah, oh, yes, that's a positive of the speaker. That's a negative. I think we're safe to hook up that way. Well, we've got noise. Not much of it, that. I don't think that's working. Oh, it's coming. God, don't think it's slow to warm up. Possible some of these old transistors aren't the best, being germanium, who knows when it was last powered up. Where's my antenna gone? So long since I used it, there it is. Let's bring that in contact with that. Would have thought it'd be a bit louder than that, even though it's only a smaller radio. It... Might shut the computer down too, I think that's causing a lot of interference. Yeah, it seems a little slow to get going, and it's pretty insensitive, or oh, the amp's quiet. Definitely might be worth checking a few caps in the thing. It's not that I've already got a few cracks in it, but I think it is sliding off. I might give it a hand from the back. Because I don't fancy pulling on such a big, old, brittle bit of plastic. So already got a crack or two in it. Yeah, there's a crack going through there, crack on the other side, so it's probably had a good year. It's got splits both sides. Probably had a good bit of use, but at least that can be cleaned, and this is pretty disgusting. Like I say, it hasn't been used in a long time, just floating around in sheds and whatever. So the speaker's loose. Then there's a, what do we got here? Some metal bracket thing on the front. Speaker screwed on the bracket there. I'll take it, we undo these things. One of the weirder designs I've seen. Where's my thinner screwdriver? Got the antenna getting in the way of that one a bit. Jeez, 
access to it. That's been undone before. And that one. Yeah, okay, I thought they were tapered, but they're just smaller diameter as I go down. And that's it. Years of dust. All the silver fish are actually eaten through the speaker cone in a couple of places, but I don't think that'll affect anything. We've got EMI, which are the company behind HMV. 132.0251, I think. Oh, at least that can be cleaned up. I might remove this speaker. Is that a good idea or not? I probably don't need to, actually. It's got a, hey, another wire soldered to the chassis there. So which ones did they say were the amp? Where's the volume control? It comes back there. The speaker comes up here, so that's the sort of area. Oh yeah, there's the ones with the heat sinks on them. They'd be your two output transistors. What's the solder like in this thing? Not the most beautiful, but I don't think it's bad. It looks much like a Philips made product with lots of pads and aren't just nice round solder joints. They're a bit lacking in solder here and there that one doesn't look the best but generally I think they're all pretty okay the fact it's working would suggest everything's connected up I want to check a few caps and see if any of those are dead it's also possible some of these transistors are not the greatest Maybe that's as loud as it's meant to go. That's another possibility, but it seems a bit quiet to me. 0.51. That's a, what is it? It's an 80 microfarad, I see. 80 at 15 volts. Geez, they're cutting it close on the voltage front, but then they probably don't see the full battery voltage across them, so it doesn't matter. Ooh, that one's shot, I'd say. 32, similar size cap. That does look kind of rubbishy anyway for some reason. It is another 80 microfarad. What should an 80 even measure? I think that other one was close. Yeah, maybe even that one's probably a little high if one's gone. Yeah, half. Where were they? Let's say 100 mic. Or thereabouts. At, oh, it's only low voltage, isn't it? 16 volts, so that's well, yeah, just just under. So which one did I say it was? That other one was that one there, which looks a bit dirty for some reason, like it may have leaked something. I've got a few more here. That one I can get to from the top. That's one good thing about axial capacitors. Is that actually an electrolytic? Because that measures open circuit. I would assume it's the same as this one. God, that's high as well. That's a 10, 5 volt, 6 volt, something like that. So this one may be something that actually does need a recap. That is 0.78, that's probably okay. Looks like a smaller cap. There's that little one in there, I think it's there. 2.9, which is probably again still fine for a little cap. It is a... 10 6 volt yeah that's pretty right might be best to change them all potentially if this is going to get a bit of use that looks like it's an electrolytic that little one there it's saying it's open well let's pull one end of that off and see if I'm definitely right that one needs to go which other one was it? This I think also needed to go. Yeah, 24. That's way too high for a 10. So it looks like probably one open, one close to it. That one pretty bad. And yeah, I guess if you're going that far, you might as well do the other three as well. But let's just have a look at those, see if it actually improves the performance. those two wasn't it I'm 
hooked. Let's build a bit of rubbish there. Now, I better make a note of what we've actually got. There's polarity, if it's an electro, which I'm pretty sure it is. So that reddish end this way, and the ne I've seen that's a negative on the other end. Another 10. So that is well and truly shot. It says positive on this end, which was the red end. And we want 100 mic. Now, I don't know about putting these modern sort of caps in there, but the owner of this is a fairly practical person, I don't think. He cares about it being original or anything and it's easy enough if anyone one day if a collector gets their hands on it they can always put it back at the moment we just want to get this thing running so they can use it occasionally and as a bit of a display piece much better than just sitting in a cupboard in the garage or wherever it's been and you know, it's been in the family for years. They would have bought it new, so they it has a bit of sentimental value. But we're not caring too much here about making it look perfect like it originally was. This is more a resurrection and repair, not a restoration. But if these caps, if it goes quite well with the new caps, then I think we'll replace everything no, it wasn't that one, it was the other one. Same cap, different position. Yeah, these wires in the way everywhere. Always oh, where you don't want them. Those two, I take it. Or is it those two? Those two are resistors, so it must be these pins. Couple of joints around there probably want. Bit of a resolder. Probably okay, but I don't overly like the look of them. Yeah, I think they were fine. And that's negative going to that side. Yeah, they're labelled. Yeah, the little. Is that the seal on the bottom's falling out, or is that just a little washer thing they put on there? We'll have a look at that in a second, but that looks like it might have. Opened up at one end, let all the juice out. But yeah, they're quite a nice little radio, these sort of ones. Normally they work fairly well, and oh, that's just a washer that's fallen off there. And yeah, they're cool looking little retro things now. Once upon a time they just looked old and had their day, but these days they're quite a cool little unit I guess we can apply voltage again and see if we get any different except powers off that sounds loud already I think that's without me touching the antenna oh yeah That's much more like what I would expect. Yeah. A bit hard to turn without the knob on there. Jeez, she's tight, so maybe that needs a bit of a lube or something. Is that the flat bit? That's the flat bit, I think. It doesn't want to go on there, though. That's the problem. Sometimes they close up a bit once you get them off. That's definitely the flat face. Certainly a tight fit. Oh, I can grab that screw, I guess. Something's dropping out. Oh, I'm touching something with my thumb, I think.
for preventing workers from accessing better paid jobs. The federal treasurer has been trying to The use of non-compete clauses is getting We want people to be able to... Hmm, what a rubbish there. The appeal will be successful. The WikiLeaks found it's attempting to appeal his extradition from the UK to the US. He's facing charges of 18 offences, including obtaining, receiving, and disclosing classified information. If you're a visual, well, those two are definitely shot. So that's got to work a lot better. So a quick look and see if this is corroded out the bottom or something. Is this just a washer thing or is, it might have been like that from the factory? Ugh, definitely some corrosion there. So I think that one spewed its guts out the bottom there. That probably is part of the seal. It doesn't want to come apart. That one's just dried up from old age. So I think the best thing might be to replace that other one. And that other one under there, that's another 10 mic there, so I think we'll replace that one as well. And the other one is a 80 at 3 volts, that's another 100 microfarad, basically. And that should cure that of those problems. Flux under that one, so I probably just didn't get the board clean 100%. Looks like it's been there from the factory. I don't even have any axial electros anymore. I don't think I've had them since the 80s because there's just no call from them normally. Sort of thing, even if you got them second hand somewhere or something out of, in a pile of stuff, you wouldn't even keep them. They were so useless. Even if they're new old stock. Unless they're big value, high value ones you might be able to use. That's that one. There was another 10. That little one there near the tuning cap near that hole. That's those two there, I think. Probably getting a few solder joints fixed by doing this as well. Why can't I get under that? It's positive that side. Duke on 10. Well, at least that one was mounted like a PCB mount one. So I don't think they've got a single PCB mount capacitor in here, even though some are got the right circuit board holes for them. So they probably weren't even a thing back then. They're still in the point-to-point -point wiring mode with, which is really what an axial electrolytic is made for. But they are good if you want low profile on a circuit board too. And you've got plenty of room to take up sideways sort of thing. I have to take that off I think. Still plenty of brass bits in this thing. And that's why they cost, I think these cost $40 according to the Radio Museum back in the mid 60s which was quite a bit of money. Uh, that's one of the reasons you get nice machined brass parts and stuff but not something you really need or benefit from much so it's a Ducon 83 
and that cap's been used for testing something. So I'll get rid of the solder off the end of it. I'll just put a 63 volter in there. I think it should really run electrodes close to their rated voltage for some reason, but I've never had any issue putting higher voltage ones in. But there's obviously not much voltage there, just an AC coupling in the audio or something. Probably the amplifier is the only part that's got 15 volts or close to it across it. Especially if it's got a 47 ohm speaker, it'd need it, I reckon, to even get the thing going. Now I've got some sticky tape over this, is it, to seal the lead on the top, maybe? So it doesn't touch on the antenna rod, I guess. It's only against the ferrite at the moment, but it could come in contact with the coil, so they've probably insulated it. Yeah, it looks a bit cruddy on that lead, though that might just be more flux, a positive over this side it should be. Yeah, it's marked on the board. Yeah, that was made for a modern circuit board mounting capacitor. Oops, I lifted that pad up a bit. What's happened there? I think it's actually come off a bit. Yeah, part of the pad's gone, I think. But yeah, radial cap fits in there nicely. So that should be everything as far as caps go. And yeah, with any other caps, if they ain't broke, I'm not going to try and fix them. That'll probably leave it at sounding about the same as before, but give it one more test, make sure it still actually runs and I think I'll turn it off then well I think we can call that fixed besides a new battery connector although like I say I'm kind of a bit loath to actually drill any holes in this thing but I might have to drill something in so I can put a socket because these were designed to open up with a screw so you could change the batteries easily but I think it might be better with a socket of some sort so you can plug a power pack in there I should have something lying around that can put out 15 volts or a lot of ones, even the 12 volt ones unregulated they will if this has a low current draw, which it should have, they will put out around that sort of voltage. Another option might be to put a couple of 9 volt batteries in series or something, and maybe 18 volts will be fine in this thing. Wouldn't be surprised if it run alright, but probably be better to lower it a bit. A couple of other joints here I don't totally like, but I don't think they're actually bad. But while I'm in here, so all those can go in the rubbish. Kind of a shame to get rid of the old Australian made ones, but they've well and truly had their day and live much longer than they should have, the ones that did survive. And that's the speaker cleaned up. I don't think there's anything else I need to do to that. So we'll give this thing a bit of a clean. I hope that white stuff here is just dust. The front panel might need a real soak and scrub, I think. I'm not sure if this thing's going to come up perfect, but looks a bit like it's been used as a workshop radio or something. It's even possibly got little bits of welding stuff in there or something. Melted in and something's landed on it and made lots of little black dots. That's often what happened to these things, I got relegated to those sort of jobs. Often it's the only reason any of them survived is they've just been sitting on someone's workshop shelf for decades. Often boom boxes and stuff end up there and 
that's how they survive getting thrown out. Just gotta be a bit careful that I don't break this. It's very rough on the back. It's been set on something hard many times, I think. Yeah, possibly a bit of paint on it. Might have to use a bit of polish on this one. It's certainly not what you'd call the mint. But since it's a family thing, I said I'll get it going. And I scored a little Aster television for my trouble. I had a little Aster, one of those wooden case 12 inch black and white things from the 60s. I said, well, give me that and I'll fix your radio for you. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> so that was, it's not exactly in mint condition either, but they're quite a cool little television, those. And supposedly it works. Valve, of course. But I think that's a fair swap. Though this needed more work than expected, though I did expect it needs something. They never just uh, put a new battery connector on it and it runs fine. I mean, he probably would have been happy with it if it just put out that amount of sound, but I wouldn't send it back like that. You could just play dumb, I guess, if you wanted to be mean and just pretend that's what you thought they run like. Most people wouldn't know any better since they're so old. If I can get the worst of this muck off it, it'll certainly be a lot better. Uh, might have to give that a bit of a... I think that originally yeah, it was silvered on these... on the letters on this, on the raised letters, they actually had silver paint on it, but most of that's now gone. Quite a bit of work. This one's, I think, beyond restoration as a collectible. Like, it's better than nothing, but it's never going to be a mint example. So, a bit of a retro kitchen radio, whatever they're going to use it for, is probably the best use for it, I think. Because, yeah, she's seen better days. It's scratched all over, so it's, it's had a good life, this one, a good amount of use. And that's why a lot of them got chucked out, they're just a bit old and tatty, not working 100%. Let's see if I can polish some of these scratches, I'm going to have to be a little careful with this, I guess. I don't know what this plastic even is, really, what sort of... They made it out of, but it's probably better than some of the new ones in some ways. We can certainly get some of the dirt out of it by the look of it, and that corner's got black marks sort of on it, scratches full of something. And that's another thing I have to do is try and clean up. Yeah, it's getting rid of some of the worst stuff. Clean up those slots on the back as well. Well, that's uh, substantially better, but not perfect, and no doubt those holes will slowly fill up with dirt again, all those scratches. So I've got all that cleaned up, polished out a bit of the, at least the dirt out of the scratches there. You probably could get that better, but a bit of dirt underneath so it, that's not going to matter, no one's going to see that. There's a bit of paint on the back that I scraped off. So it's substantially better just from having a bit of a clean and I'm sure this front will be the same. I've probably got to be a little bit careful. I'll get a new paper towel since I've got a bit of polish on that one. I do not want to polish any of this radio station stuff off. Just, I'm always a bit sus on these things because there's a risk you'll wipe them off. That's got quite a coating of stuff on it. It seems to be well made. I guess the other thing we need to do is clean this off. I hope we don't take the red stripe off it or anything. But yeah, this has got cracks, so it's a very, it's a well used radio. This one, a, a well used example, not a mint collectible. So 
So it'd be kind of good if they do end up using it or at least displaying it again. Because this is a nice little decorator piece really, is about all it's good for these days anyway, in many ways. And that's all a collector would use it for. It's something to look at. I don't think anyone's going to be listening to talkback radio or something these days. Even long-term listeners are telling me it's rubbish these days and they don't listen to it anymore. Which I didn't think I'd get hear people that listen to it for decades start saying that, but it must be getting pretty bad out there. That's a bit of paint or something. I might have to polish it off. Yeah, it's some of it scraping off, but let's get a cotton bottom try and polish it right out of there. That's coming off now, I think. Again, this is not in the condition to be worth being too pedanting about what I do. And that's you know, there's a little bit on. I wonder if I can polish those off. It's some of those scratches on the front they're quite deep by the feel of that so maybe all we can hope for is to get a bit of the dirt out yeah that's this radio has been sat down on all sorts of surfaces and moved around and scratch I think this is actually a bit yellower than it probably should be as well possibly want some bit of retro brighting or something but I'm not going to fiddle with that it may well have been a creamy colour I think the one I looked at online looked like it was quite a bright white though but it doesn't mean this particular one with the orange might have been a different colour it definitely looks yellow on the end like it's sun damage yeah it's different colours on different patches so I think it is the sun has definitely affected some of it yeah lots of scratches on the bottom part this really has been moved around a lot oh, that's definitely an improvement now yeah, can't get the rest of it clean there's more paint or something up there. Sort the surface stuff off at least. Yeah, it's getting there. dirty down that speaker grill so these ones could be a bit difficult you can't really go side to side in the slots might even give that a hose off I think oh, there's one of those mounting springs has dropped off and there's another loose one there it's one thing I should have, probably should have took off yeah, there was only two there anyway and oh, that's quite dirty on the back I should have Hosed it a bit more, but that's got most of it. I think we'll give it another go with the cleaning stuff. Try and scrub out the last bits. Yeah, it's quite hard to get right down in these grills. sort of angle downwards and so you don't see the speaker but the sound can come out from underneath what you're looking at but that's substantially better than it was at least and yeah the rest of it's just paint or something stuck on there well the label fell off so I'll have to glue that back on 
but that's pretty good now besides a couple of spots of paint and stuff and that brown goo which I might try polishing off and there's you know, a little spot of green paint or something there and there's another bit under there might just have to scratch that one off yuck can we carefully that's the worst of it that's got it well it's certainly an improvement it shines up quite nicely a oh, screw there I don't know what that bit of metal there does if anything much just speaker sort of butts against it oh and there's a couple of these oh just one fell off little bakelite washer things so that sort of pushes a bit of a tight fit now Oh, maybe that goes. Oh, is that meant to press? Oh, what? The, maybe that is a clamp for the spike. How would you get that on? From the side, I guess. It was a little loose in there, so maybe it's meant to clamp it. It must be to clamp it, surely. That fits on a pin there. Yeah, that would make sense that it would clamp it down. Now I might have to loosen this off. Another nice little brass piece there. Yeah, that's probably what we've got to do. I won't undo the link there. There's a little wire link to the chassis. too tight because we might risk breaking something oh, washer 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 oh there was a washer under there was there and of course when I try to put it in place it falls off oh because they're sprung aren't they that I really don't want to go back in in a hurry oh these are quite long Yeah, that's looking good. A lot cleaner than it was. Now I've got to try and get this to go into that brass bit. It did seem to be reluctant before. And it still is. So the problem is when it's come off the edge, it, it catches on the edge. How do I... I don't want to risk bending the wrong thing here. On this brittle old thing. If I can just bend that out a little head that might be enough I can count on it but oh, I got it <laughs> not what you want to be doing you want it to go on nice and softly that gave it a little bit of a clean still I think it's actually scratching by the look of it That's probably all I've got time for at the moment. At least we should have it running better. Let's just put it back together and see what it looks like in its original kind of condition. There, yeah, much nicer. That's actually just a nice little display piece. At least the chip's on the back too, so that looks a million dollars compared to what it did before. 
So the next question is, do I just drill a hole in one end? Oh, I didn't put the volume knob back on, did I? Where that disappears out? That actually wants it clean as well, I guess. It's not too bad. A little bit of damage to the red there. It's got a bit of dirt on the edge of it, though. Always something disappears and hides. We've got to give that a soak. And try and get all the muck out of these little grooves. Which doesn't look like it's all going to come out of there. stuff in there he was a mechanic at one stage so maybe got some greasy hands on it in the workshop or something okay so now it's back together with the knob in there. You can only just see the red part of the knob anyway. So I didn't need to clean it too well. So yeah, I think we'll just have to maybe drill a hole in the back or something. I'm not sure if I've even got a screw on panel mount DC type socket. The other idea I was thinking is can I fit, I wonder if I can fit a couple of thin wires through the vent. That might even be the ideal thing. I'd prefer not to, even though this one's not mint. Oh yeah, you can flex those quite well. Okay, that's it. I think I'll just poke some figure eight through the vent. Of course, then there's a risk that if someone pulls on it, they'll break the vent bit anyway. But that might be the go. Possibly I can somehow clamp it around that screw or something around that screw to hold it so that it never gets pulled on to the point it can break the back. That might even be the best thing, I think, just hardwire one in. And if someone wants to put it on a shelf or something without the core, they can just snip the thing off. We can always fix it later or whatever. It's not like you can get batteries for these things or anything. So I think we'll do that, and then it can at least be used. And yeah, it's come up quite nice, interesting colour. You don't, didn't see them in orange very often, I don't think. One of the few colours you didn't see a lot of radios in. So yeah, well, I'll get back onto that and fit some, fit a power socket to it, or power adapter to it. Okay, just glued that label back on. Well, it's a move when I touch it. And the first power pack I found is some AC-DC adapter, 220 milliamps at 12 volt. Can't remember if it was for something important or not, but probably not. Well, I'm sure if we plug this in, well, we'll have more than 12 volts coming out of it with no load because they're not regulated they're just a transformer a, probably a half wave rectifier and a filter cap wow 17 volts so that's pretty high so I guess we should see if this radio pulls enough current to bring that down a bit oh, i forgot to check was that positive tip it is the right sort of socket for it there we go so i could even just unsolder these wires i've got to repair that one that's come loose oh, that's some hard old plastic now i'll solder that back where it belongs I could really leave this connector in there, I guess, but there's a risk it'll short out on something. A bit of wire hanging off from the old one. Get rid of that. And I think it's the end terminal on the side one. Better check it, I guess. Should be the positive and not the negative, I think. Or not. <laughs> well, that must be the switch then. That's the tip and... I 
That's the negative. So it was on the big pin. In case we need to know. Well, that's a long wire. Well, they went right up the pin by the look of it. As they, I think they actually meant to do that with these connectors, but they didn't do it on the positive. Sort of joint, but this is only temporary anyway. Guess I better check. Well, I'll maybe get a station tuned in, it'll be the full sort of current drawer, I guess. So it drops to about 16 at full volume and not much, so it's not really drawing much. 16.3 at low volume. So even when the amp's running, I think that's probably close enough. I doubt this thing's that picky about it. Well, all the electrolytic capacitors are high our voltage now. So I think that is a suitable power pack. I think I'll just cut the plug off, feed it through here somewhere, possibly while anchoring it. I'll have to find out which cable's which. Hopefully that wasn't off anything I care about. Probably should have left a bit of lead on that so I could use it for something, but anyway. Let's double check it, make sure we get the polarity right. What have we got? The white stripe. That could be positive on a good day. And it is. So the one with the white stripes down it is our positive. I think I can just feed that through the bottom one here. Push it up a bit. As easy as I hoped. Uh, at least it clamps it really well. Man, that is actually surprisingly tight. I wasn't actually expecting that. We could tie a knot in this thing as well, I guess. So we've got something to pull it back to. And I guess the next thing is how am I going to connect on? Together. Let's get that old cable and stuff off there. Might just put a bit of heat shrink over the positive one and join it onto the original wire. So that was the white trace to positive. to the don't think we even needed that much wire there might just cut that down a bit shorter as much as I prefer to leave everything original there's probably not much point with this radio much better that it's made into something usable than worrying about it's originality, I think. 
at least if it's got a life, there's more chance of it surviving than not getting thrown in the bin that way. Might just make it. Pull that right back so it doesn't shrink when I solder them together. But I'll just solder them side by side, I think, and that should do it. If I can get those fairly flat, because it slips as soon as I apply the soldering iron. Very hard to do them out in the middle of nowhere like this, but that's my ply. Let's just flatten that out a bit. Still quite warm. So you've got to be careful, or you'll shrink the heat shrink. Just putting it in place. soldering iron should do it as long as it can't slide back and forwards it's not going anywhere it out, actually. <laughs> all right what is the oldest university in australia sarah oh is it that one or that one mm. i've got a 50 50 I was thinking about putting something around there, but I think that'll be pretty good like that. Makes a slight bulge in that back bit. That'll probably give it a slight amount of extra volume, but I don't think that's going to do any damage to anything. It's only about a volt or so extra. So I guess if I'm going to go that far, I could have just drilled a hole in the case or whatever and put a socket on there, but I think that'll be good enough just like that. Makes it a little bit risky having a weighty thing hanging off it. But that should do the job and I might throw that in the connector bin in case I want it one day rather than chuck it in the rubbish. But I don't think anyone's going to find one of those batteries in good condition to plug into anymore. Got a nice little radio that. Sounds pretty good. They did give pretty decent volume. I guess that was part of the reason. I think I've actually got that tightened up too much. I can actually see that bulging in a bit. The reason for using those higher voltage, bigger batteries they weren't like the tinier later ones, they got I mean, it's almost got a 100mm speaker in there so they were made for like picnics and bits and pieces of things to actually be heard and probably as a mantle radio and stuff so if you're going to spend that sort of money on a radio you want to be able to use it in multiple situations but yeah it didn't come with any sort of power or battery eliminator, eliminator I don't think though maybe someone made an aftermarket one if they didn't make a factory one so people may have used them with an eliminator of some sort. No doubt someone would have sold them as an aftermarket thing, but they were really made to be a portable. Not sure how much those batteries cost back then, but I'm sure they were reasonably expensive. But anyway, that's got that all going, so I'm sure the owner will be happy to put that back into use. So thanks for watching.